I would like to bring you to the world of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Oh. In this tweet from Ursula Perano, she says, AOC on talks about her future ambitions with a heavy comment, quote, realistically, I can't even tell you if I'm going to be alive in September, and that weighs very heavily on me. All right, well, hold on, hold on. Girl did some mushrooms, huh? Oh, right. <laughs> oh my gosh. She's like, Face I'm getting ready for this. Life doesn't even exist. It's okay yes. to cry. Now, hold on. There's several questions. Does she have a terminal disease? Right. I hope mm. not. Okay. She it's hope called not. life. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is she suicidal? That's a serious question. Because saying something like that, I think people haven't thought about what she could mean Does by sound this. Suicidal. Right. And if she's not sick and she says something like, I don't know if I'll be alive, usually that's a sign of depression. Especially in the context of this article, she says a woman of color can never be president because people hate them or something. It's like very <sighs> negative. She was crying when she said this. Really? She they said that she had tears she in her eyes. She does. Yeah, but yeah, but you know what? We saw the fence. Maybe she yeah. needs like a fifty one fifty or something. She needs to be brought somewhere and given an evaluation because if you tell people crying that you don't know if you're going to be alive in September, we need to sit you down and ask you what's wrong because if you ignore this, something bad could happen. We want her to be okay. And I know the left is going to be like, oh, shut up. And they're like, no, dude. You, you Okay, we're going to play a game. Pick one. Do you think she's referring to a civil war and that racists would come and kill her by September? Yes. yes. You think that's what she's talking yeah, about? I think her. she's shook up you from think, the January 6th thing and it hasn't left her you mind You think yet. that a couple of weeks ago, she was sitting there thinking, a couple of weeks from now, a bunch of white racists are going to start a civil war and I'm going to die. She probably thinks that she's a target if something like that were to this happen. Is, she'd be at, like, after January 6th, she was like, I, I could have died. You but know? she's not if walking around with security there, detail. Died. See, this is, this is my point, right? The assumption a lot of people make is that she must be talking about like what Kathy Griffin is talking about or something like mm. that. The other question is, okay, all right, most people are probably going to think it's something to do with political conflict. We still have to ask questions about like, dude, I'm the Civil War guy. I'm like mm -hmm. ranting and raving about it. Mm -hmm. And I don't think in three weeks there's sure. going to be a bunch of racists going around hunting <laughs> right. down women of color. Maybe it's well, her, climate change. Her, like yeah, no, right, climate exactly. Her comments, <laughs> her comments remind me more of like... Uh, Mark Ruffalo, didn't he have this thing? He's like, if we're around for yes. long enough for me he to did. Have She did say the world was going to end in 12 years a few years ago. I right? think that true, yeah. if she'd been living with September, purpose, like, it wouldn't uh, matter if she's alive or dead. Like when you're living your purpose, you don't lament about when it might end. You're just mm -hmm. doing it. So obviously, maybe she's lost a lack of purpose. She feels kind I mean, of aimless. This was a, a crazy interview on a lot of fronts. I also enjoyed during it that she said she wasn't sure it would be like, good for her to marry a white guy she's currently engaged to a white guy yeah. that she's been dating maybe she's like years. he's gonna kill me in my like, sleep she <laughs> seems like she's got a lot of anxiety she needs to work out and i'm i'm being a little sarcastic there but also like you are setting yourself up for a lot of scenarios where you feel like at any point your life could fall apart and or be in danger like something is wrong i think oh, she might be suicidal wrong. really maybe i think i think we we are looking through the lens of the culture war and so we are assuming that someone political like AOC must be referring to what we see mm -hmm. instead of asking a very simple question. When you hear hooves, it's not zebras. It's usually horses. Mm -hmm. The GQ article says tears pooled in the corners of her eyes. Mm. She says, I hold two contradictory things in my mind. One is the relentless belief that anything is possible. At the same time, my experience here has given me a front row seat how deeply and unconsciously as well as consciously so many of these people in this country hate women and they hate women of color. Hmm. People ask me questions about the future and realistically, I can't even tell you if I'm going to be alive in September. What? Why is the immediate assumption, like if, if, you, if you started off from a blanket, no reference to any individual mm -hmm. and said, someone says that in three weeks they might not be alive. Your immediate reaction wellness would not be, check. well, they're talking about civil war. No, no yeah, you'd say no. wellness yeah. check. Yeah. You'd be Absolutely. like, okay, why do you think that? The first question might be like, are, are, are they sick? Like someone who thinks they're gonna die in a few weeks, are they terminally ill, they have cancer? I mean, maybe AOC does and we don't know about it, I don't know. But I think, I, I, I either she, look, either mm -hmm. she's insane and she mm -hmm. thinks that a bunch of crazy extremists are gonna come kill her, which, that sounds insane. I, yeah, it does or sound she's insane. depressed and crying in an interview about how people hate women of color and she doesn't know she'll be alive in September. Right, but yeah, her leading with the people hate women of color is the thing that's kind of bringing me into the fact that maybe she's talking about extremism or... But also, if you grew up always believing that you were the victim and your job is to overcome, you've got to do it and like, you're also the victim, but you're still kind of winning because you got to Congress, but also you're still the victim. Either like, way, this, wellness check. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. that's her. What she yeah, what opens with like, mean, I hold two contradictory things in my mind. Like, this is a very... Confused I'll, I'll and divided person. Yeah. If if she said this to like a psychotherapist who wasn't involved in the political world, mm -hmm. he'd probably be like, um, yeah, okay, you need so about a need three month vacation, girl. Well, th well, three days, an evaluation. Just go to, sit to down Hawaii or something and, and look at the waves. Just yeah. sit on if, the beach. If she genuinely believes 
that there's going to be white racist men hunting women of color that and that's why she'll die she needs serious therapy she needs a break right now i don't know how long but she needs to get out and she needs to go talk to a doctor because that's crazy she's i think it's i think it's a fair assessment to say she lives in a world where Biden comes out and says the MAGA extremists are a threat to this country, where she hears in the news all day about white supremacists, and she genuinely internalizes and believes this is the world she lives in. Mm-hmm. That's possible, too. But I also think that is still using our echo, echo chamber worldview. We know about political problems. So to, to a hammer, everything looks like a nail. We assume that political people must view the world this way. And if she does, that's the real reason. When in reality, it's like, dude, she's extremely high profile. Mm-hmm. She gets people shitting on her all the time maybe she's just like maybe not the in a pressure good place. is a lot it is, yeah, I, which I, I can have a lot of empathy for that uh, you know i will point out again i know it sounds random but she did get engaged in april and i think that you know, the idea that she's moving forward with this high profile relationship she's already in congress like where do i go from this pinnacle career i mean people regularly mm-hmm. include her in polls to become president like what if she is actually unhappy with where her life is? She can't walk away from this, right? It was a big, big change. Big jump. Mm-hmm. Be, yeah. Like people rag on her. I, I think it was great that she was a bartender. I think that the idea that a regular person can, you know, get a seat in Congress is, is fantastic. I think it's stupid to insult her over it. But imagine going from no public persona to being the one of the highest profile Democrats. Yo, it is stressful. One of the highest right. ranking officers on the Death Star. The United States, <laughs> the military machine is the Death Star. And all these people working in Congress are serving on the Death Star. So I understand her state of mind is broken because she's like, what am I doing? What Like, that's just existential. That's like mm-hmm. underneath the, the content on top of what she's sure. been feeling. And this girl's tuned in emotionally. She's like, we're talking about leftists are emotional, rightists are logical. But where, like, she's what, very emotionally I, in like, tune with what she's feeling. Like with Mark Ruffalo. He was asked, will you be the the Hulk in the future? And he goes, if the world allows it and I'm still around, mm. the interviewer didn't follow up with, hold on there a minute. Do you Wait, think what? you're going to die? <laughs> the interviewer here as well. She, like, well, hold, you're not going to be alive in September. Mm-hmm. A good interviewer is going to be like, are you sick? Yeah. Are you depressed? Or do you think the war is going to break out in a couple weeks? Especially if she's been on the verge of tears throughout this whole interview. Like, it's Well, not I don't know about yeah. the whole interview. It said or at that, least that point, right? right if you're hitting emotional crying. notes in an interview yeah. and then this sudden person suddenly like, and I'm going to, I might not even be alive in September. Like you're not having a like, haha, we're joking around. I don't even know if I'll be alive that like you have to respond to the gravitas of what's going on. Right. This seems like I got a clarifying question. Only hitting with serious notes. Yo, she's I got a, I gotta a say red pilling on. breaking moment right now. Maybe I went through that in 2008 and I was suicidal. I thought for sure, like I mm. gave up. I, I thought, oh, the world, like we've got the Federal Reserve is we, we've been under this system. Like there's no hope. I, I had completely given up, and, but I, I still wanted to have hope. I had that other part of my brain, like she's saying, where I'm like, I know everything's possible. Here, here's, here's what I want y'all to do right now. And just stop a second. Imagine someone sitting in front of you. Or at, think of a random person, you know, crying says to you, I might not be alive in a few weeks. Well, why? Why? That was the first thing I would say is but, why. But exactly. The fact that she said this, it's like, again, we're, mm-hmm. we're approaching this from a political perspective. Yeah. Think about how you would feel if someone you knew told you that. Yeah. So I'd be like, yo, you, we need a doctor. Like, we yeah. got like, You're staying with okay. me for the next three weeks. Yeah. I'm the doctor right now. I'm not a doctor, by the way. But tell me why. At least, you know, let's start with friendship, and then if it, if it's unresolvable, yeah. maybe we'll get a psychotherapist. Yeah. This is this is a crazy thing to say. It and is. they publish it's a crazy it. thing to not follow up on. Especially, like, where's the mm-hmm. journalist in this one? Wesley Lowry, what are you doing? Okay, so journalists aren't mandatory reporters like you have in the hospital. In the hospital, if somebody said something like this, yes, you are on suicide watch. You don't right. get to have any cords. You don't have any cutlery. You have to eat finger foods. R- let's, let's clarify that. If, if in the hospital someone told you, I might not be alive in a few weeks, you would report them and... We would put yeah. them on suicide watch, mm-hmm. which was supposedly what Epstein was on. He clearly wasn't because he still had access to sheets. You don't have when, access to anything. Right. When you get arrested, they take your shoelaces and your belt away. Exactly. And, yep. and, and because they don't want you to kill yourself. Mm-hmm. Or someone else, I would imagine. I've had Perhaps. Yeah, several family members Baker acted. And as soon as you say anything toward the lines of, of harming yourself, it's immediate. You're being yeah. put in a facility and you're there until they feel like you're not a threat to yourself anymore. But you know, you know what's going to well, happen? And she's making this comment to a journalist. Like, what is she saying to people she really trusts and knows? Like, right. that's what's so disturbing true. to me. I think what you're going to hear is many on the left are going to dismiss this, downplay it, say it's the far right, because they would prefer she be be in a desperate and dangerous position if it wins their wins for them politically. That's right. They don't care about her. Uh, That's so, the sad part. If she did go and do something to herself, the amount of people who would like use it as a story and use it as a way to move forward their political agenda. Would another be. possibility is she is a sociopathic narcissist who faked tears 
and said this to try and win brownie points in the media not think like believing to herself there's no real threat and she's just True. a crazy person well and she, if she is someone whose emotional spectrum is kind of off she can perform emotion she knows how to cry you know on cue let's say but she doesn't actually always feel the weight of her words mm -hmm. you know she can say like i'm not e not even be alive and not know what what the appropriate response yeah, yeah, yeah. to that to be like if she pictured someone's in front of her saying oh, i might not be alive in september would she respond with like can, we need to talk about that are you okay or would she respond with like well, I really need you to vote I know, early then. I know what's going on. What's going on? Tell us, Tim. AOC oh. is likely depressed because of Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for checking out this segment from the TimCast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to TimCast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the TimCast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to TimCast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.